Okay, so this is gonna be my next and hopefully the last video about uh, dynamic dependent dropdown lists. And uh, if you did watch the other dropdown list videos, you've probably seen how I made this project where I have this dropdown, you select one of these brands, and then you have basically the models that show up just for that particular brand. So if I go here to this tab, this is basically the way it's laid out. We have this brands here in our C column and basically on the right we have the models. And depending on which one of these makes we select, so if we go with Ferrari, we should only get models that show up over here. So if I go back here and select this, you're gonna see that the drop down only has those models from that particular make. Now the challenge with this particular way of doing this is that this is only going to work if you just have two boxes side by side that you're trying to use this for. But if you're trying to do this for the whole column, so you want to have this whole column to work the same way when you select the brand and you have the models for that brand next to it, this is not going to work. And to make something like this, we're gonna have to use app scripts. Now, this is gonna be a pretty fun video for me because I haven't done this before, but shouldn't be a problem using app scripts to get this done. It is also probably gonna be a long video, but if you know this channel, you know that it's not new. It happens all the time. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to restructure this. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna, first of all, delete these first two columns here because we're not gonna need that anymore. Now I'm gonna also restructure this data the other way. So it's probably nicer for the user. So paste transposed like this. I'm gonna delete these rows on top. So now I should have the brands on top and the models in each column. So now I'm gonna go back here. First of all, let me remove this data validation. Now here, obviously we have this, so I'm gonna actually remove that as well. I'm gonna start over from scratch. So this is where we are. So what we need to do, we need to first make the first data validation tab which is basically gonna be this column. So I'm gonna do control shift down, starting from the second row on top there, then I'll do data, data validation, and then in here, I'm gonna select list from range. Now here, I'm gonna click on this little select data thing, move this to the right, go to the other tab, and I'm gonna select this entire row going all the way to the right. I'm gonna include blanks, because I'm probably gonna be adding more going forward, right? So hit okay, save, and if I go back, that should take care of the first column. So if I go to the top, you'll see how I only have makes from that particular brand. Uh, basically, I have the brand selection dropdown, right? Now the challenging part is to do the model dropdown so that if you select, let's say BMW, now you should have a dropdown of just BMW brand going to the right. So to do that, we're going to use app scripts. Now uh, I'm gonna go under tools, script editor, and we'll get started with app scripts. So I'm gonna click here on title project. Let's give this a name. So drop down lists or something, hit okay. That should get us started. Now I'm not gonna go through every little thing in app scripts. So uh, if you're completely new to app scripts, it's gonna be difficult to follow this. Basically, if you have been watching at least some of the app scripts videos, you should be fine. Now, if you haven't, at least go back and watch the first couple of App Scripts videos so you have some idea what's going on, right, with App Scripts. Now, I'm gonna start, first of all, by accessing my spreadsheet app and my spreadsheet 
right here. So uh, I'll create a variable SS and I'm going to say spreadsheet app dot and I'll go ahead and get the active spreadsheet dot get the active sheet in that spreadsheet and I should do it. Get active spreadsheet, get active sheet. So that's our spreadsheet. So go ahead and save this once in a while. So uh, what I'll need to do, I'll need to basically show you how to do a couple of things. So the first thing is we want some changes to happen when somebody changes something in here in this column of values. So uh, we can do that. I'm going to actually leave that top one alone. And I'm going to use this function called on edit. And on edit is a special function in spreadsheets. And that's a function that going to be triggered every time there's a change on the spreadsheet. So for example, if I just let me just copy this line, put this here, and then say ss dot get range. And let's just do a basic range. So I'll do b2 colon, uh, let me actually use a different column d2 colon d8. And I'll do dot set value. Set value, so and I'll set it to I don't know nine nine nine. So just so that you see what's gonna happen, right? So I'm gonna save this now. I think we may need to get access to the spreadsheet to get this work, but I'll, I'm gonna try this anyways. So I'm gonna go back to this drop down, and right now basically we're saying when something changes on our spreadsheet, do this. So if I go back and go here and let's say just type 23 in here see boom this happened so if i clean this up see again something changed on a spreadsheet so every time something changes this is gonna wor work out that way it's just gonna run the actual function automatically and that's something that we're going to use in our advantage now the second thing we're going to do we're going to have to limit that only when the change is happening in the first column only in this you know uh cells that are over here so we don't want this to trigger every single time only when we're here so to do that we're going to limit it so basically we're going to go ahead and get our SS, which is, well, we already got it here, I guess. Our spreadsheet. And we're going to basically get our active uh, cell, the cell that we're in. And we're going to get the column of that cell. So basically the get active cell is going to get us the current cell that we're in and then the get column is going to get us what column it's in so if it's in the first column then we would like to trigger that now i don't want to trigger it when we're changing this label make so i'm going to have to also limit it the row being from the second row and going all the way down right so the second thing i'm going to have to use so i'll just put it on a separate line right now i'll just do get row and that should get us which row that active cell is in and what i will have to do i'm going to just have to do an if statement and i'm going to say if uh, this the column equals one. So we're in the first column, right? Uh, and then I'm going to say, and 
At the same time, if the row is greater than one, so that's our if statement, I'm gonna do my curly brackets, then I want to run this. So I shouldn't need this. So let's get rid of those. And hopefully if I didn't mistype anything, and by the way, equals, this should be double equals. If not triple equals, but that should be fine. So there we are, so save. Let's go test this out. Now, if I'm changing this, I'm clearing this, see, nothing happens. I go here, nothing happens. If I go here, nothing happens. Now, if I go and change something here, that thing runs because now it's in the range of action. If I remove this, go back here, change it, see, it runs again. Let's change to something different. It runs again. Now if I change this, see, now it happens because we said starting from here and going down. So that's how we can limit when that triggers that action and when it happens, right? So I'm saying if it's in that range, then let's actually run this thing that we run. Okay, so that's something we're gonna have to use in our advantage. So basically our logic is gonna be when we use this dropdown and select something, let's see what's in here. And based on that, let's apply a different validation list over here based on this value right there on the left. Now, the first thing I'm going to do uh, based on what's selected in this cell, right? Let's say we select, I don't know, Toyota in here. So what we want to do, we want to just go and search for that Toyota in this list and find out which item in that list that Toyota is. Is it in the first column, second, third, fourth? Where is it located? That's what we're going to do first. And we'll just, for now, just put the value here on the right someplace. So let's try to do that. So I'm gonna, first of all, just say D1, let's put that. And I'm gonna have to go and search in this tab that's called lists, right? So I'm gonna go search in this tab in this range from A1 through I1 and see where that is. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get all those values here from this tab and put them in a variable. So going back here, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call var makes equals. So makes range, I guess. That would be make make more sense maybe, uh, you know what makes. So I'll just go to the spreadsheet. Now I can't go to the spreadsheet because this is gonna get us the active sheet. So that's no good. Maybe I should restructure this a little bit. So the other thing I'm gonna have to do data spreadsheet, we'll call it that way, da data SS. So we're gonna go to our spreadsheet app and instead of getting uh, to our active spreadsheet, we are, well, basically that's our active spreadsheet, but we're not gonna get our active sheet. Instead, we're going to get our, where is it? Get sheet by name. So the sheet is called lists. So lists in codes. So we're gonna do that. And that's gonna get us that spreadsheet data SS. Now I'm gonna have to 
go inside of that spreadsheet and get range and I'm gonna get the range uh, from A1 through I1, right? So I guess that's gonna be, let's, ex let's actually populate it with a different way. Get range, let's do the full this. So we're gonna start from the first row, first column, and then we're gonna go to the first row and the column we're gonna get is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For now, I'll just type nine. Maybe later we'll change this to a little something more dynamic. So that's our nine over there. So you know what? Let's just do it right now. So I'm just going to take that same, uh, you know, data spreadsheet and I'm going to get the last column and I'm going to say, just go to the last column in there. So that should get us our makes. Well, that's not the makes, that's the range of makes. Now inside of that, we're going to do get values and that should give us an array of makes that we have as a result of this. Now, inside of that array of makes, now I'm not sure how exactly that array is gonna come out, so we probably have to just take a look at it. Let's see if we can lock this out inside of this on added method or not. So, nah, I feel like we're not gonna be able to do that, but we'll see in a second, so. I go here, select this, that ran, and it would put the value. Now let's see the log. So yeah, so good. So we're able to log that out. So basically, this is an array inside of an array. And it's just one thing in the array. So if we get to the first thing element, that's going to be our array. That's this array of brands. So that's good. So that means if we go and log out makes zero, which is the first thing in our array. So let's go and change something here again. So it runs. We should be able to see that now it's just an array of those brands. So that's good. Now we want to find out which one of these was actually selected in here. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go here. So it seems like I'm going to have to use the active cell a few different times. So for that, I'm going to create here a variable or active cell equals this. And then instead of doing this, I'll just replace it with my active cell. Same goes here. And here in my active cell, get value. Let's just try it. We'll find out. So I'm going to log this out. Save. Now I'm gonna go back and make sure that I'm actually getting the value out of the active cell. So getting back here, let's test it out. So here, this is my active cell. So if I select BMW, I should be getting BMW in my logs. So log, see BMW, and that's the array. Now if I go and redo this again, and I select this, go back here, log, See, I'm getting this. So that's good. So I was able to get that. 